in this problem we have been given that a rational function which is defined as x square minus 2x plus 4 and x square plus 2x plus 4 it lies between 1 by 3 and 3 and using this we need to find what is the range of this another rational function but here now we are dealing with exponentials. So first of all if you compare this equation with this exponential equation one can immediately figure out that if one makes the substitution that 3 power x plus 1 if you make the substitution that this is equal to y then this expression which has been written here can be actually written as y square plus 2y plus 4 divided by y square minus 2y plus 4. Now this is exactly in fact this is nothing but the reciprocal of this rational function and hence one may be actually misled to immediately conclude that the range of this function is also one third and three. But the mistake which one makes in such cases is something which is subtle and something where you have to be very careful is that here when you were calculating the range of this function the only thing which actually mattered is that x should be any real number. x was allowed to take any real value and therefore you got values between one third and three. But when you make the substitution y equals three power x plus one, here this y is cannot take any real value. It can take only positive values. That is because of the property of the powers of three or rather a power n where n is a, a, a is a positive real number then we very well know that the its powers are always positive. So that is what we need to be careful here. So we need we have that y should be greater than 0. That is one another added condition which we have in this case. So what that means is we actually need to compute the value of y square. So let us compute what is the value of this thing itself. So y square plus 2y plus 4 divided by y square minus 2y plus 4 let its value be equal to k. Now what is the condition that we have to put we need to of course be that y should be a real number and further we need to put the condition that y should also be a positive real number ok. So once you make that so we know what is the standard procedure to get the value of k you cross multiply and write it as a quadratic and put the conditions. On cross multiplying this we get k minus 1 times y square minus 2 times so we have minus 2k minus 2 which can be written as minus 2 times k plus 1 and plus 4 times k minus 1 so this is equal to 0. And first of all let us uh, use the discriminant condition to get real roots. So what that gives is k plus 1 the whole square minus 4 times k minus 1 the whole square. So this should be greater than or equal to 0. Alright. So what one can write is k plus 1 plus 2k minus 2. this times k plus 1 minus 2k so k plus 1 minus 2k plus 2 this should be greater than or equal to 0 and here one gets the condition in fact that so one will get that 3k minus 1 times in this case we will get as 3 minus k this should be greater than or equal to 0 or in other words k minus 3 is less than or equal to 0 and this actually immediately gives us a condition which has been specified here that k should lie in the interval 1 third to 3. So this is fine. So after having put the constraint that the value of y should be real now let us put the constraint that it should also be positive. So once we have that condition the there are two things to be satisfied now that is k minus 1 times f of 0 should be actually be positive. So that is the first condition that k minus 1 times f of 0, f of 0 happens to be 4 times k minus 1. So ultimately we will get as 4 times k minus 1 the whole square should be positive which is true uh, unless the value takes uh, which 
value takes of k is equal to 1. And the other condition which needs to be satisfied is that the average of the roots should be greater than 0. So that is the most important thing here. So the average of the roots we know by the sum of the roots formula it is equal to so k plus 1 divided by k minus 1. So we have k plus 1 divided by k minus 1. So the average of the roots should be greater than 0. So what does 1 get by putting this constraint? So we get that k plus 1 times k minus 1 should be greater than 0 which implies that k should be, so this k either should be less than minus 1 or it should be greater than plus 1. So either k should be less than minus 1 uh, or k should be greater than plus 1. All right, so now let us analyze the cases here. So k less than minus 1, it's not possible because we have already got that k should lie in this interval. So now looking at k greater than 1 and that is has got a intersection with this interval and hence one can conclude that the value which or rather the range of this function is equal to 1, 2, 3. So that is the important thing. So the value of this function, so the range is equal to 1, 2, 3. So again you have to be careful that it actually does not take the value 1. In fact if you have a look at it you can see that the value it approaches the value 1 when the if in this case when x tends to minus infinity then both the numerator and the denominator become 10 to 4 and that is how you get the value equal to 1.